are some of the proactive measures I've started taking to make sure my sleep is more dialed in than it has been in the past. Because the more I research and learn about sleep, the more aware I'm becoming that most people are entirely decimating their sleep routine and how detrimental that is to your overall health which will therefore affect your sports performance. So today I'm gonna blow your mind with some sleep facts and hopefully help change up the way you prioritize your lifestyle. So I have spent the last couple months really researching sleep, making sure that when I get back to competition with karate combat, I'm gonna have everything as dialed in as possible because I was not always doing that with my previous fights. Especially when I look back on my weekends, like five or 10 years ago, where I was staying up to two, three in the morning and then getting less sleep, far less sleep than I should have had for my Saturday morning training session. It's just not good. So I wanna throw some facts, some information at you guys today, which I think will just kind of make your mind go kapoom and it will actually motivate you to start making changes when you understand facts, you understand numbers. I'm all about the truth. Show me science, show me numbers. And when I see that, then I actually get around to making changes. Now, a lot of the information that I'm gonna share with you guys today is from a sleep expert named Matthew Walker. I'm finding him super fascinating to listen to. And just the fact that he shares so much information in such a profound way is just fantastic to keep watching and watching. But I'm gonna take you through some of the main things that I've got from him. And I wanna start with one that I just went, wow. That is wild because I always think, oh, you know, if I get one extra hour or one less hour, how much difference could that make? But Matthew Walker talks about a global experiment that affects 1.6 billion people in over 70 countries. And I was thinking, what could that possibly be? What experiment is so widespread? And then he went, daylight savings. I went, oh, daylight savings, of course. I've never really understood why we have that nowadays. In the past, sure, it made sense, but nowadays, why is it still around? So let's look at some numbers here on how much this one hour time change that comes two times every year can affect people. He said, daylight savings, when we spring forward and we lose one hour of sleep, heart attacks go up 24% in the average hospital. But in the fall, when we gain an hour, heart attacks drop by an average of 21%. We're talking one hour. How many times have you guys been like, ah, oh, you know what? Instead of getting eight hours, I'll get six hours. It's no big deal. Well, guess what? It is a big deal. Now, these numbers are most likely for somebody who already has a compromised heart, but that just goes to show how much and how impactful one little hour of sleep here or there can truly affect you. Now, another crazy fact that he threw out is something that really touched me here because I have a kids program where I teach martial arts. And every once in a while, somebody comes in, new, new student, and the parents go, oh, your child has ADHD. And I go, huh, I wonder if there's anything that could help this child just in their day-to-day -day life that would really help them stay more focused. And a lot of times I wonder about diet. I wonder about what they're eating, how much sugar they have, how much dye, you know, red dye, green dye is in their diet. But he talks about sleep deprivation and the profile for that. Saying that a sleep deprivation profile, the symptoms are reduced alertness, impulsivity, a lack of ability to concentrate, difficult in memory learning, in behavioral problems. And most doctors are gonna diagnose that as ADHD. And because I'm very passionate about children's martial arts and teaching youth and helping them develop, I go, oh, that's really sad. That's something that should be nipped in the bud right away as a parent. And again, it goes to show you how much impact lack of sleep could have on so many aspects of your life. It could be the physical part of your life. It could be relationships. If you're getting snappy or at work, you're having difficulty with memory or just anything, sleep is gonna be something that you need to check in on and make sure it is dialed in. Now a quote that was taken from a Matthew Walker podcast was basically the shorter your sleep, the shorter your life. And you're just going, oh, oh shoot. Well, now I should really start prioritizing it because there's that expression, you can sleep when you're dead. And he said that is a wildly inappropriate thing for people to think and say, because yes, actually lack of sleep can cause you to pass away earlier. It can reduce the longevity of this life you have on earth. So you need to make sure 
that you are prioritizing for myself, not only looking at it from an athletic point of view, but also going, I've always said, when I'm done this career, I want to have a life. I want to make sure my body's not banged up and I'm hurting everywhere and I'm, you know, I'm still athletic and I'm still able to do what I want. Well, at the same token, I don't want to push so hard and sacrifice sleep and then find out it cuts five or 10 years off my life. That would be terrible. So sleep, good sleep, is going to equal longevity or it's going to help you live longer. A very important thing to know. Now the final fact that I want to throw at you guys here about sleep, which you probably didn't know, I didn't, is you cannot bank sleep. What do I mean by that? What did Matthew Walker mean by that? Well, he's basically saying if you think that you can, you know, go throughout the week, you have five days and you're going to go, okay, I have six hours to sleep, six hours, six hours, six hours, and six hours. But then on the weekend, I'm going to have big 12 hour sleeps and I'm going to balance the field out and it's going to help me catch up. Or for example, you know, tomorrow night, I'm going to have a terrible sleep. I have to work really hard. So tonight I'm going to get a really solid extra sleep. He said, no, it doesn't work like that. To a certain extent, it helps. But overall, no, it's not something that you can get away with and it will still be detrimental to your health, your sports performance, all of that. So if you're somebody, for instance, who is traveling to a different time zone and you think, okay, the night before I'm going to get loads of sleep and then when I get there, it's going to be great and I'm going to be okay. Well, no, that's not the case, unfortunately. So now that we've thrown out some facts from the Matthew Walker podcast, things that I learned, things that blew my mind, let's talk about actions, things you can do to start getting better sleeps, things that I've started doing to try and make sure as I track my sleeps, I'm actually able to show with metrics that things are getting better and I'm going to be able to perform even better in my upcoming fights with karate combat. So first of all, the one that I've started taking every night, magnesium, this supplement is going to help me with stress and help calm me down before bed because that's a problem area for me. Very often I start to get down in bed and I just am a little bit too wired. So it's helped me calm down and allowed me to fall asleep earlier. That is so important. If you guys want to get on some magnesium, I would suggest buy Optimizers Magnesium. It's the one I've been using. I have a link down below. You can go to magnesiumbreakthrough.com forward slash Gabriel and use the promo code Gabriel10 to get yourself 10% off. I really suggest you guys try this out. Get yourself a bottle or two or three and try it out and see if you notice a difference because it's worked for me and that is something wild to be able to tell somebody that yes, this supplement is working for me because in the past I've tried many supplements and I didn't notice a difference. So this is the first proactive step that I've started taking, which has really begun to make a difference for me. The next sleep tip, which I've started implementing, is utilizing enough darkness before bed to make sure that I start sort of crashing a little bit because very often in the past I would leave all the lights on. I would have everything bright. I like bright. It's happy. I just find it vibrant in the room. But I keep the lights on, I keep the lights on, I keep the lights on, then I flip them off and I go to bed. So what I've started doing is either turning off more lights around the house or using the dimmer, just dimming down the lights a little bit, a little bit more, and just every 20, 30 minutes prior to bed, just dropping and dropping. And then I start to get just that little bit of doziness. And what you're trying to do is recreate the darkness, the natural change of day outside, where we go from a sunny to that dark sky. And it's something because of the way we live now, when you think about the term midnight, what does that mean? Well, middle of the night. But 12 o'clock, the middle of the night, for most of us, is when we go to bed. There's many people who go to bed at midnight. And it's not the middle of the night anymore, it's the beginning of the night for us. So what we need to recognize is the natural darkness is the time when we should probably be winding down and heading off to bed. And when the sun comes up is when we should be waking. But because we're not doing that, and because we've created an artificial environment around us, it is beneficial to start dimming the lights and just start getting your body ready for sleep, even if it's in a false way, not really recognizing what the actual environment outside is doing. Next up, and I talked about this the other day, this is something Matthew Walker said, but it was how full or how hungry should you be before you go to bed? And I said, do not go to bed hungry. That's what, that was my advice. Make sure you eat before bed. Matthew Walker says, don't go to bed too hungry, but don't go to bed too full. Either one is going to hurt your sleep. So you guys need to find for yourself what your nice balance is. And for me, it's basically, okay, I'm going to bed in half an hour. I almost need to have a full meal right before I go to bed. Otherwise, I'm going to wake up super hungry at three or four in the morning. But you guys have to play around with that. And I don't love the advice that I've heard many people say, which is, you know, don't have any food 
four to six hours before you go to bed, that for me would just keep me up all night because I would be starving. The next tip for a good sleep is a diet that is high in sugar is going to equal a bad sleep. You don't want to be having loads and loads of sugar. First of all, it's not good for you in so many other ways, but it is going to affect your sleep. So if you have been having trouble getting your head on the pillow and crashing, you need to look and go, okay, how much sugar am I having throughout my day? Can I decrease that? And another tip, because we are so often on our iPads, our TVs, we're in front of screens, is we need to reduce our screen time or at least recognize that that screen time is going to delay the melatonin release in your body. When that happens and the melatonin does not come at the right time when you're trying to fall asleep, it is gonna make it very difficult for you to put your head on that pillow and crash again. It's just gonna be very difficult and I have noticed that very often. What I've started doing is trying to minimize my blue light before bed. There's a number of ways to do that. I will talk about that in a future episode, but just be very cognitive of that. And if you're struggling, recognize that the blue light could be an issue. Now, here are some other facts which I did not know about sleeping, things that could help you. First of all, sleeping temperature, 63 to 66. That's cold, but you want to go to bed with socks. And he said, ideally gloves on. I had never heard of that before. You want your extremities, your fingers, your toes to be nice and warm, but you want to have a slightly cooler body. That was just a little tip that he gave out. You also want your sleep times, your going to bed and your waking up to be regular. Having, you know, I'll go to bed at nine one night and then 12 the next night, but then, you know, I wake up at six and the next day I wake up at nine, especially with weekend schedules, that is not good. You want to dial in your weekends and your weekdays and have them very similar so that everything is quite regular that'll help you sleep better. Now, in one of the podcasts with Matthew Walker, somebody asked him, if you could give us a number, how many of our North American society are sleep deprived? Is it one in a hundred? Is it one in 10? Is it one in five? And he went out and said to Joe Rogan, I believe this was in the Joe Rogan podcast where the two of them are talking. He said, no, no, we have the numbers on this and they're not up for debate. One in every two adults are sleep deprived. One in every two? Really? That's wild. I hope I'm not one of those guys because I take extra caution, especially now to make sure that I'm getting those sleep hours I need to make sure I can perform every day and to make sure I'm healing. And that is why I love that magnesium supplement I've talked about because I have prioritized sleeping for so long to help my body heal. But when you go to bed and you're not able to fall asleep right away, that's hurting you. I basically go Sleep is my recharge time. It's the time where my body heals. So if I'm rocking an injury, if I have a shoulder injury, a really bad one, and I get minimal sleep, I find, and I've actually tracked this and followed the data basically, I find that it takes a long time to heal. But when I get the proper sleep, it's almost like a movie where they put you in some sort of cryo chamber or something like that. And all of a sudden you're like, whoo, I'm feeling good. That healed fast. Well, it's the same thing that I've noticed with sleep when I get so much sleep. Like if I have a bad, bad back injury, I'm not even kidding you. I'm going to bed for nine hours and then I'm taking sometimes like two hour naps during the day. And it's not that I need it, that I'm tired, but I go, I'm going to do the best healing when I'm getting that massive amount of sleep and being able to put my head to the pillow and fall asleep faster. Thanks to magnesium that is going to give my body more time to recover, which is extra important. Now that I am an athlete who is 36, and now looking with karate combat at the next three years of my career, I have three more years minimum that I'm going to be competing, which is going to take me through 37, 38, 39, probably right around 40 when I'm planning on retiring. But the older you get, the more injuries are probably going to pile up and the longer it takes you to heal. So thank you, Magnesium and Bio-Optimizers for making sure I'm getting that sleep, which I 100% need. Now I have two more things I want to talk with you today about sleeping, and this one is probably going to blow your mind because you might be somebody watching and going, yeah, 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 Gabriel, this is all good, but I get only six hours of sleep and I function just fine. And Matthew Walker on the Joe Rogan podcast actually talks about this and he goes after Joe Rogan asks him how many people who say they can function on five or six hours of sleep can actually do it. Matthew Walker goes, well, we actually have the data on that. And then he says something funny like rounding up from the power of blah, 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 thinking it sound very mathematical. We have an exact number of 0.000% of people can function on six hours of sleep as well as they would on a proper amount of sleep. So you might be somebody who's sleeping just not enough, but you think you're doing well, and maybe you are, maybe life's going well, 
but you could be doing better. And that's the big difference. That's what we have to look at. And I've talked about it many times on the channel in terms of fight sports. We don't always need to try and be better than our opponent and make that the priority. We want to be better than ourselves. We want to be, I've said this so many times, the best version of ourselves. And if you are getting six hours of sleep, you are not the best version of yourself. You cannot possibly be. The science is there according to Matthew Walker. You will be the best version of yourself with that eight to nine hours of sleep. And if you're not somebody that can get that massive amount of sleep at night, try and get those naps in. That's something I do. I'm getting my full night of sleep plus the naps. But Matthew Walker said, yes, the naps are not as ideal as having a full proper night of sleep, but they're the next best thing. They are going to be very helpful. And the final thing, the final big tip that I want to give you, because this is something that I have struggled with in the past. As I said, I put my head on the pillow and I just don't fall asleep. Well, the suggestion that Matthew Walker gave was you need to associate bed with sleep. So if you put your head down on the pillow and it takes you more than 20 minutes to fall asleep, you need to get up. You need to go somewhere else in your house. You need to get yourself tired over there. So maybe you get up, you put a dim light on, you sit in a chair and you read. Obviously, you're not going to turn on your iPad or your, your TV because then we have that blue light, which you already talked about. So you're going to get your book and you're going to read or you're going to do some deep breathing exercises or something. And you're going to wait until you start to feel tired and then you're going to return to bed. And then you're going to hopefully fall asleep in under 20 minutes. And you're going to keep doing this until bed becomes the spot where you go only for sleep. It's not somewhere where you're going to go, okay, I'm going to lay in bed and watch a movie, or I'm going to associate bed with food. We don't want those associations. We want it to be the spot where you go and right away you see the bed at nighttime and you go, okay, I'm going to go to bed and I'm going to fall asleep now, as opposed to, oh, it's time to eat. It's time to watch a movie. He said, bad idea. So I'm going to actively work on that because I do this very often, especially in the past, before I've tried to change these habits, I get in bed, I put a show on, I think, okay, the show will help me fall asleep. But in reality, or the facts are saying that no, it's not helping me fall asleep. I would be better watching something downstairs or reading something downstairs even better and then coming to bed and going to sleep. That is a tip which I have started implementing, which I think you guys should as well. And overall, those are the main facts that I have collected about sleep as I've started my studies, as I've started trying to really dial in this aspect of being a better athlete and just a more fit human who's gonna live longer, according to Matthew Walker. Good sleep equals a longer life. That's what we want. I don't wanna be somebody who cuts my life short because I didn't take the time to research something so important as sleep. So guys, once again, if you want to get on this pattern of better sleeps, try to implement what I told you tonight. Try and do some cold therapy prior to bed. You wanna lower your body temperature. That's something that I've heard is going to be fairly helpful. Not pleasant, but fairly helpful. And of course, like I've already said, magnesiumbreakthrough.com forward slash Gabriel. Gabriel 10 is the discount code. That will get you some savings when you head over to buy optimizers and pick up those magnesium supplements. Other than that, guys, thank you for joining me today. I hope you liked this episode. If you did, please give it a like. If you haven't already, join the channel and get subscribed. As always, guys, train hard. I will be back here very soon with more videos for you.